Hello, this is Lisa Phillips, and this is a, a short little video on preparing for stakeholder involvement following the best practices. The best practices are these. Identify the responsibility and influence is the first one. You can use this doing the RACI matrix showing who um, is involved, who is the uh, stakeholder that's responsible for certain requirements, who is the business owner and decision, um, and the stakeholder who needs to be informed. The RACI matrix, you just fill that in. It's amazing. It's very simple, but it works splendidly. Um, two, defining the stakeholder involvement uh, requirements, and this is assessing the consequences of not including someone and, and of including, So, um, but mostly of who not to involve. So if you're not involving someone, you really need to consider what you might be missing and, um, and make sure that that can be alleviated in some other way. Otherwise, you're going to have to take that into account and make sure you get the data or information from them that they can provide. Balance stakeholder involvement. There's going to be people who are very enthusiastic, who want to talk your head off, and who wants to control the things just because they're so enthusiastic. And then you have some who are reticent stakeholders. However, it's your job to balance that. You know, temper the enthusiastic one and get his ideas, but don't let him dominate because he's not necessarily the only one right. The more people that you include, usually the more holistic view of the requirements you're really going to get and how to fulfill those requirements. So keep that in mind, so you're going to have to be the moderator who balances all of these different personalities, but um, with the goal of obtaining a certain requirement for your, um, your client. So uh, finalize your approaches to stakeholder involvement. Um, so figure out how you're going to approach them, um, uh, what levels of involvement for each ones, and action you're going to need to take in order to get um, to communicate with them or get their commitment to meet. You know, sometimes they're not so uh, happy to include you if they feel that the project isn't um, worth their time, but, you know, having the project sponsor to follow up with just in case you need to, but plan out your course of if this person isn't participating, how do I um, get them to participate willingly and with enthusiasm and how you're going to make that happen. Because it's, go it's going to happen. Some people might not think it's worth their time. And um, I don't know if you can necessarily convince them that it's worth their time, but someone else can convince them that it's worth their time. And you probably or may not have that authority to assert it, so know who to go to to get that authority, especially if you always lay a case out for why you need them and why not having them might have an impact on the project and the scope. And five, communicate their involvement. So if that's an email on you know next steps or project milestones, or just communicating that we need another round of requirements. An email can do, I think, very well for this as a heads up and FYI, as well as other forms of communication. So uh, thank you very much. And next we're going to start getting into individual and group requirement elicitation techniques. Thank you very much.